Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Grand Theft Auto style game in Unity and welcome to episode 43. In this tutorial we're going to focus on some more UI, we're going to have a hint when we get into the car telling us how to drive, we're going to add a new town location that flashes up in the bottom right corner, and we're also going to fix a couple of things that we have done in error along the way. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So I want to start with the hint of when uh, we get into the car it tells us how to drive and we're going to set up the global hint script just a little bit differently now since we're going to have a couple of different uh, hints. So let's go to our UI folder and let's go to our global hint script and the way we're going to set this up is going to be same sort of principle but we're not going to use this particular line here because we want to play the same animation over and over for different things this can sometimes cause a little bit of a problem in unity sometimes it just does not want to reset and does not want to play animations so the best thing for us to do is actually do a real cheap and easy trick to make it play so let's get rid of this line of animator don't need it and after we've changed the hint number to zero, and after we have got all of this here saying what the hint is, what we're gonna do is turn the hint text off and then turn it back on again instantly. And that is a real cheap, quick and easy way of resetting the animator component so as it will play the animation again. Obviously there's extra step we have to do in Unity to do that, but fundamentally it'll work just fine. So hint, text dot set active and in brackets false and then yep you've guessed it hint text dot set active and in brackets true so we've basically reset it there so what will happen is if it tells it it's number one then it'll reset to zero which is what we want it'll change the text and then it'll reset the animator component or the entire object it doesn't really matter too much Either way, what this will do is it will just play the animation. So obviously we need to repeat this if statement. So copy, place below, and this time the hint number is going to be two. And hint number two is only gonna trigger when we are in the vehicle. And I think realistically, all we need to do is change this text to say something reasonable like press W to drive forward, press S to reverse the vehicle. So press W to drive forwards and press S to reverse the vehicle. Obviously you can have a lot more to that. You can put whatever you want as the hint text. I'm just doing that quick and easy to get on with things. So let's save that script and we don't need to do anything else to that script. That'll do just fine. However, we do need to go to a separate script to tell this one that we need to change it to two. And that is going to be vehicle entry. So whenever we enter this vehicle, we need to do everything we've normally done. And then we need to tell the global hints to display that second hint. And to do that, just before we start the coroutine of exit trigger, we need to say global hints, global hints dot hint number equals two semicolon and save that script so that will effectively work coding wise the next thing we have to do is back in unity and we'll just let it compile all good and if we go to our hint text right there and you can see that it is already set on the animator is already on however if we go to animator and set hint fade as default animation so remember when we initially created this this was the default animation we only changed it so as we could play the animation through scripting but we no longer need to do that so hint fade goes back to being the default animation so i'm going to save my scene and if we press play now it should work as intended so when we go through this initial startup sequence and we get down then we start our player and then after a couple of seconds it says hint is number one and then that will play out so as long as this first one plays out the second one will play out as well at the right time any second now 
There we go. So there is our first hint on screen in the new style that we've created in the script. So that means when we go over here to get into our vehicle, the second hint will also display. There we go. So you can use that exact same method to create as many hints as you want. And we'll probably will create more hints as we go along. Um, I think we'll probably need to create one for when we pick up a weapon and all stuff like that. So we will probably get around to that gradually. You know, it's little things here and there that you build in. And uh, yeah, you get on with it. So next thing we need to do is let's create a trigger for when we get to Summertown. And I'm thinking Summertown should be uh, somewhere over here. So let's say this section here is where we enter summer town and we have the north display trigger there so what we can quickly and easily do is we can duplicate that and let's rotate it by 90 degrees on the y-axis and then we can bring it into place over here so if you remember tony tells us that we need to go to summer town to meet carlos or carlos however you want to pronounce his name and all we do is rename this to Summer Town Display. And then in Location Display, we just need to change the name right there to Summer Town. Let's save and let's quickly make sure that that works as well. I mean, theoretically, yes, it's going to work because all we've really done is display a different name. Use same object, different name. And that's really all there is to it. So um, while this is just quickly doing that, we are going to fix a couple of mistakes that we have made along the way. Um, not specifically bug fixes, but one, well, one of them certainly is a bug fix that you may have noticed with the vehicles. Let's just make sure Summertown displays. And there we are. So this would be effectively Summertown when we finally build it. So let's take a look at um, the initial startup of this. In fact, while I think about it, let's actually move uh, global hints component into global. So originally it was on sequence holder, and I think I mentioned it a couple of tutorials ago, we were gonna move it to globals. And all you need to do is just drag and drop the actual component onto its new object, which we have done now. So there's our global hints. So if I remember um, our initial scene, I do think that has a bit of an error, but we're going to go back to our original scene um, just to kind of prove something. So let's go to scenes, if I can find it, and intro scene. And yes, we want to save our main scene. So the sequence that we have here um, is basically he walks along and it's everything happens in the scene. Wow, can't see anything. Oh, there's the canvas. So everything happens in the scene. You asked for this, George. You asked for this, George. Lorenzo, so I swear it wasn't me. me. We had a typo here. You squeal on hot face for sleeping with the fishes. Um, I think we have tried instead of tried. But we also have Steve something Lorenzo. else. Three years ago, three Jimmy years ago, Jimmy Horseface tries. So Definitely. that there needs to change to no. tried. Also remember the three years, and I'm sure you know where we're going with this. Uh, scripts. If I can remember where it all was. Gosh, it's been a while since this scene, hasn't it? It really has. Um, <laughs> sequence holder. There it is. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, voice subs is the script, I believe. So down here, we've got tries. That should be tried. And also three years ago. Our other scene says two years ago, if you remember. It's been like that for a long time. And you know what? I don't think anyone's even mentioned that in the comments. So what are you guys doing? You're not paying attention. So that's that error sorted. Back to the open world. Sequence holder. Actually, I think it's actually um, a straight up text is it yeah so it's right there so we just need to change that to three years later and save and the other bug that we have if you get into a vehicle whilst holding w or s when you get out the vehicle 
you will no longer have footstep sounds. So we need to fix that bug. So to do that, we need to go to the player controls. So let's go to character control script right there. And it's this one here is stepping. So we basically made it so as if we are not stepping, then we can play. However, if we get into a vehicle, the problem is this always stays on. So we need to make it so as it doesn't. So we need to first of all make this static. So public static bool is stepping is false. On vehicle exit, we then need to make it so as this particular um, variable actually changes. So when we get out the vehicle, so make sure we are on vehicle exit here. We are on vehicle exit. We need to down here just before the coroutine, we need to say char control dot is stepping equals false and save. And what that will do is it will reset the character stepping sound. So what I'm going to do just to show you what I mean is if I press play now, keep an eye down here and you'll see. Oh, you won't see it anymore, uh, but you would have seen um, the tick still on the is stepping one. But now we reset that. So if you want to try that out for yourself and see if you did come across that bug, if you want to try it out now, you should should be able to um, hear that just fine. So let's just make sure that when we get out of the vehicle, we can still hear the stepping sounds. There's Malcolm. Good old Malcolm. So let's get in the vehicle. And let's drive. And now let's get ourselves out. And there we go. That was interesting. So the car crashed into her and she didn't do anything like I am man. So that's something we'll end up doing a little bit later on. That's going to be kind of cool when we get around to that running <laughs> the NPCs. Um, OK, so, yeah, that'll fix that little bug there of the stepping sounds. So next tutorial, what I want to do is I still want to work with the car a little bit uh, because when we drive through the triggers, for the town places, um, let me quickly check the, yeah, so the problem we've got is that it won't display the location name because we are effectively no longer tagged as the player. So that's something we're going to fix in the next tutorial. And we're also going to bring in some more vehicles. So we're going to effectively duplicate the car we've got. So we've got multiple drivable cars and that's going to be cool to work with. So until that next tutorial, guys, Thank you very much for watching.